This lecture continues the gravity topic and outlines an activity you can carry out looking into how to predict acceleration due to gravity on other planets. So just to start, a bit of background. Planets and the Moon compared to Earth. In this bar chart, you can see that acceleration due to gravity varies considerably between different planets and the Moon. This table gives the values of mass, diameter and acceleration due to gravity of different bodies in the solar system in comparison with the Earth. So Earth is defined as being one Earth mass, one Earth diameter and one Earth gravity and the other planets are quoted in multiples of the values for the Earth. The information in the last table is summarized in these three bar charts. You'll see that in terms of mass Jupiter is very much more massive than any other planet and in fact has more than two and a half times the mass of all of the other planets combined. Jupiter is so massive that on this scale the inner planets do not even plot. In terms of diameter, Jupiter is around about 12 times the diameter of the Earth yet in the last bar chart you can see it only has two and a half times the gravity of the Earth. So as we've learned in earlier lectures, both the radius, the distance from the center of mass, and the mass of the central body have an effect on the gravitational field or acceleration due to gravity at a particular point in space. In the lecture on mass and weight, we learned that g is proportional to m, where g is acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared, and m is the mass of the body exerting the gravitational field in kilograms. So acceleration due to gravity is directly proportional to the mass which is exerting the gravitational field. We also learned that all objects experience the same acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a planet regardless of their mass. And this was discovered by Galileo and proven by the astronauts during the Apollo missions and the value of acceleration due to gravity is directly proportional to the mass of the planet. Acceleration due to gravity effective distance. In the lecture on gravitational fields we learned that the force due to gravity and acceleration due to gravity decrease with the inverse of the distance from the center of mass of the object exerting the gravitational field in meters squared. So g is proportional to 1 on r squared where r is the distance from the center of mass in meters. We can combine these relationships into a single relationship so that g acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared is directly proportional to m the mass of the body exerting the gravitational field in kilograms divided by r squared where r is the distance from the center of mass in meters. We can turn this relationship into an equation by inserting a constant of proportionality which we're designating as capital G. That gives us the equation g little g acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared equals big G the constant of proportionality multiplied by m, the mass of the planet or other body exerting the gravitational field in kilograms, divided by r squared, where r is the distance from the center of mass in meters. The constant of proportionality, capital G, is called the universal gravitational constant. It has been measured using extremely accurate equipment to be 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. G, the universal gravitational constant, is the same everywhere in the universe. It is a fundamental property of mass and relates the gravitational force exerted by a mass to the amount of mass present in kilograms. So G is the universal gravitational constant and is the same at all points in the universe. Little g, acceleration due to gravity, varies according to where you are in relation to another mass. Okay, on with the activities. The first activity 
looks at determining acceleration due to gravity on the surface of planets outside of the solar system. So just to start, a bit of background. Researchers using data from the NASA Kepler mission have recently estimated both the mass and radius of several planets orbiting the star Kepler-138. This star is a red dwarf and is around about 200 million light years away from the Earth. The planets whose mass and radius were determined include Kepler-138b, which is approximately the size of Mars and is the smallest planet outside the solar system whose mass and radius have been determined to date, and Kepler-138c, a rocky planet which is slightly larger than the Earth and is therefore classified as being a super-Earth. Both of these planets orbit their star too close for liquid water to form on the surface. So while they're not actually candidates for life, they are both terrestrial planets. The third planet that will be determining the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of is 55 Cancri E. It's approximately twice the size of the Earth and orbits the star 55 Cancri A, which is a yellow dwarf star and is slightly smaller than the Sun. 55 Cancri A is around about 41 light years from the Earth and is one part of a binary star system and the other member is 55 Cancri B, which is a red dwarf. 55 Cancri E, the planet, became the first planet outside the solar system to have its atmosphere analysed in February 2016, and there are some indications of volcanism on the planet's surface. As with the other two planets, 55 Cancri E orbits its star too close for liquid water to form on its surface, so none of these planets are actually candidates for life. Method. If you plot the mass of a body in kilograms divided by the radius squared in meters against acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared, you should get a straight line with a gradient equal to g, the universal gravitational constant. For any planet where the mass and radius are known, you can use this graph to estimate the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet. Procedure. Using the data in the following table, plot g in meters per second squared against m on r squared, that's capital M on r squared, where m is the mass of the planet or other body in kilograms, and r is the distance from the center of mass in meters, and the units for that are kilograms per meter squared for the eight planets. Add a line of best fit, and this line of best fit should be a straight line, and it should pass through the origin. Then use your graph and the information provided below to estimate the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surfaces of the following planets. Kepler-138b, Kepler-138c, and 55 Cancri E. Then finally, calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of these planets using the formula G equals capital G M on R squared. Here we have the table of values for you to plot and you'll see that the planets are arranged across the top with mass, radius, mass on radius squared and gravity going downwards. The mass is in units of 10 to the 24 kilograms. Radius is in 10 to the 3 meters, so in kilometers. Mass on radius squared is in 10 to the 10 kilograms per meter squared. And gravity is in meters per second squared. This is an example of how you would lay out your graph with a title above the graph, and always remember to put a title on your graph because it's worth marks in the exam. Acceleration due to gravity, g, in meters per second squared on the vertical axis, and m on r squared by 10 to the 10 kilograms per meter squared on the horizontal axis. There is a piece of graph paper included in the notes for this section, as well as 
the full procedure, background and all of the information you need to carry out this exercise. So for Kepler 138b, mass is 5.788 by 10 to the 23 kilograms. Radius is 3056 kilometers. So first thing you'll have to do is convert the radius from kilometers or 10 or units of 10 to the 3 meters into units of meters. Then you divide the mass 5.788 by 10 to the 23 kilograms by the radius squared in meters which gives you a value for m on r squared and you use that value to get the acceleration due to gravity from the graph. There is a full worked example of how you do this in the next lecture. Kepler 138c, same procedure, then 55 cancrier, same procedure again. Then you calculate the value of g using the formula g acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared equals capital G, the universal gravitational constant, multiplied by the mass of the planet or other body in kilograms, divided by r squared, distance from the center of mass in meters. You'll find in the notes for this lecture that you have a section laid out like this where you can put in your calculated values of acceleration due to gravity. You will have noticed that the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet is simply g multiplied by m on r squared and you have already calculated m on r squared. So it's simply a matter of multiplying by g, capital G, the universal gravitational constant, your values for m on r squared. The questions for this particular activity are you're asked to compare your calculated and estimated values for acceleration due to gravity on the three planets and to suggest one reason for any discrepancy. And two, the slope of your line of best fit provides an estimate of the value of g. Suggest one way in which this estimate could be improved. And once again, there are full work solutions and answers to all of these questions in the next lecture. Our second activity is based around a piece of footage from the Apollo 15 moon landing. During this moon landing, the commander of the mission, David Scott, dropped a hammer and a feather on the moon. And this event was videoed. Data extracted from this video can be used to estimate the acceleration due to gravity at the Apollo 15 moon landing site. And as in your experiment to measure acceleration due to gravity at your location on the surface of the Earth, the value of acceleration due to gravity at the Apollo 15 moon landing site is not necessarily the same as the average acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the moon. Okay, a bit of background. From your previous studies in physics, you should remember the equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared, where S is displacement in meters, UT is initial velocity multiplied by time, and one half AT squared is one half times acceleration in meters per second squared multiplied by the time squared. The initial velocity for an object accelerating from rest is zero. Therefore, we can simplify this equation to s equals a half at squared. Displacement equals one half multiplied by the rate of acceleration multiplied by the time squared. We can rearrange this equation in terms of a to give us a on one side, and we get the equation a equals two multiplied by the displacement over the time squared. Or as this is expressed in the syllabus, ay acceleration in the y direction equals 2 delta y displacement in the y direction divided by time squared, where ay is in meters per second squared, delta y is in meters, and time as in, is in seconds. Always remember if you're given a question and your units aren't in terms of meters per second squared, meters, seconds, kilograms, to convert your units to these.
The vertical acceleration in this case is the acceleration due to the gravity on the surface of the moon, or g moon. The gradient of your line of best fit is given by the equation gradient equals rise over run or delta y over t squared. Therefore, acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the moon is twice the gradient of your line. The data in the following table has been derived from the video. You are asked to plot this data as vertical displacement versus time squared and estimate the strength of acceleration due to gravity on the moon from your graph. And there's a suggested layout of the graph here and there's the full procedure, the information and a piece of graph paper in the notes for this particular lecture. Title of the graph is Vertical Displacement versus Time Squared for a Feather Dropped on the Moon. Vertical displacement is on the vertical axis in metres and time squared is on the horizontal axis in seconds squared. To calculate the gradient of your line of best fit, the gradient is final value of delta y minus initial value of delta y over final value of t squared minus initial value of t squared. Your line of best fit should pass through the origin, so therefore your gradient will be equal to the final value of delta y over the final value of t squared. To calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the moon, simply multiply your gradient by 2 and then compare your calculated value for acceleration due to gravity at the Apollo 15 land site with the accepted value of 1.62 meters per second squared for the moon and suggest reasons for any discrepancy. These reasons will probably be fairly similar to the reasons for any discrepancy between your calculated acceleration due to gravity at your location in the previous exercise and the accepted value for acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. You are also asked to name one other method which could have been used by the astronauts to measure the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Moon. So just think of another way in which the astronauts could have measured the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Moon. Thank you for watching.